It's a very important fact. <laughs> Hey everyone, hi, Jay again, back again with another video nobody asked for and today is going to be the very stereotypical trans boy YouTube thing of finding tips. And I know how it sounds but as you can tell today I'm not binding. Basically it's just going to be, I was only binding for about 6 hours when the intense pain in my chest started and luckily I did listen to my body, I took my binder off as soon as I got home. but. That has meant for a good few days I haven't actually been able to bind, which has been very emotionally exhausting. My dysphoria has been up the roof because even when I'm not binding, I'm very aware of my chest, considering the amount of pain. I get pain when breathing, walking around, standing up too long, sitting in the same position for too long, moving. like, And it's only meant to last a couple of days and I've still got it now, but, you know, binder breaks. Anyway, so I just wanted to point out a few of the signs of how you might have cracked your ribs considering the binder GC2V not sponsored. Okay, basically the binder at the front, which is the compression, you have this little sort of mesh thing. This is what holds your chest down and around there it can get very tight around the rib area and the chest area. So you really do need to be careful because if you crack a rib or bruise your rib, I can first hand tell you it's very painful. So the first thing to do to check for is on the NHS website. Um, strong pain in your chest area, particularly when you're breathing. Swelling or tenderness around the affected ribs. Sometimes bruising on the skin or feeling or hearing a crack if it's a broken rib. So the two are very... Obviously, if you're in very intense pain, you should go to A&E straight away. Better safe than sorry, get yourself to A&E, but um, the NHS website does suggest that you take painkillers such as paracetamol or ibuprofen. Um, if you take them up to 48 hours after the injury, hopefully the pain will go away. Hold an ice pack on the area that hurts the most around your chest. For me, personally, for some reason, it's this side, hence why I'm like slouching a bit more. Um, take a rest, don't bind, don't do any sporty stuff, anything really out of character, very energetic, because you will just do more damage to your ribs. Um, walk around and move your shoulders a lot and make sure you clear mucus from your lungs. Big like sharp coughs and it does actually help because after you do cough like it feels a lot better. And for the first few nights it might be a little bit helpful to try sleeping a bit upwards, a lot of pillows and just make sure you're comfortable because it's a very uncomfortable thing but the more you stick to the recovery the quicker you can get back to binding again and going every day. Because I know for a lot of people not binding for one day is not an option and for me mentally it more or less wasn't an option but it's something I've had to do for the long run. I mean I would suggest if you are experiencing the cracked ribs or the bruised ribs, luckily I didn't crack mine. Wear some form of sports bra, not something obviously feminine if that's not your vibe. If you want a pink sports bra, it's your thing. Yeah, sports bra. Um, it's just more or less when you are not obviously binding and you're just laying around the house, you can feel very aware of your chest, just general dysphoria anyway, but I think the pain definitely adds to the stuff going on. So it just more or less just keeps everything neat and where it should be ish, even though it shouldn't be there, I know. But that's just one of those things and it does help because the titty ain't flopping. Big don'ts when you can't bind, even though I know you need something because, yeah, um, make sure you do not use bandages. Bandages compress a lot more than a binder ever would. You would very, very, very easily crack a rib if you use ace bandages, any sort of medical bandage and it's not not worth doing. Oh, please don't do that. Like, please. <laughs> um, don't lie down or stay still for a long amount of time because your body will just sort of like tense up and that's not very pleasant. 
and more or less just what I was saying before don't strain yourself or don't lift any heavy objects or do sports and all that usual stuff um, see a GP or go to the minor injuries unit if your pain hasn't improved within a few weeks and a lot of it's just a weighing game but you should go to a and &E, local hospital um, if you have shortness of breath that's getting worse have chest pain that is getting worse have pain in your tummy or shoulder you're coughing up blood coughing up yellow or green mucus and have a high temperature or feel hot and shivery so there are a few good signs to look out for i've seen a lot of videos online talking about binder safety and how important it is but there's nothing that really tells you what you should do like after because for a lot of trans guys it is very common i know i didn't have any resources to look up and i tried hot baths and soothing gels and everything and none of it really helped i think you just need a rest which might be harder than it sounds but that's just one of such is life i may as well talk a little bit about binder safety where to buy safe binders how to bind safely just while well, i've got your attention if i've kept it so my binder is from GC2B, it is space grey and it is a full tank, meaning that half tank will go up to here like a little crop toppy vest and the full tank goes right the way down your body. I think it's a lot of it's down to preference, a lot of it's down to your body type, what you prefer. I personally prefer the long tank. Um, there's UK companies up and coming such as Spectrum. Um, and they're a lot more affordable and a lot less pricey than GC2B, Underworks and all the other companies you can get them from. I highly recommend if you can avoid it and you do have the funds, please do not buy anything from Amazon or China or any sort of place that isn't a binder specialist because these places don't make them for safety. They don't make them so we can feel easier. They make them for money and it's just is not worth it like if you don't get the right size binder that can really really affect your ribs and really damage the way that your body slants i know a lot of guys including myself like have like a natural slouch from binding so much and you just you don't want anything to make your posture worse don't ever sleep in your binder <laughs> literally said everything sorry sorry for being a binder expert Okay, remember to sit up straight, you gotta lean up straight. Okay, let's do it, let's do it together. <laughs> Wiggle your torso a bit. Okay, <laughs> stretch your arms out. Oh, I can't read it. Take a deep breath. Exhale nice and loud. Uh, do a cough from your chest. <clears throat> Uh, do a cough from your cute tummy. Ah, oh, thanks, Tumblr. That made my day. <coughs> um, and make sure nothing is rubbing, poking, or hurting. That was a nice little Tumblr post. Anyway, if you want to give that a like if you want to let us know in the comments if any of it was helpful any bad binder experiences you've had because i know how painful this is this is so horrible <laughs> um so yeah let us know subscribe if you like the content check out the previous video where me and my friend's dad react to transphobic hate and subscribe for the next one and bye